welcome to another lecture in the UW Synthetic Biology lecture series. Uh, today we're, we are going to be talking about the C1 repressor protein and uh, this is an important protein in the life cycle of lambda phages. Uh, so let's take a second and um, describe what a lambda phage is. This is a diagrammatic representation of a lambda phage with its genetic material in here. And it's um, commonly used in DNA cloning and um, it's used to infect uh, E. coli bacteria where it can then inject its genetic material and which can then replicate in the host bacterium. Uh, so there are two replication cycles uh, for a lambda phage. There's either a glytic uh, replication phase or the lysogenic replica replication stage. And let's talk about them real briefly. So here's the lytic stage. We have the cell, uh, which is here in green, and the bacteriophage. So at first, uh, the bacteriophage attaches to the cell and then injects its genetic material. Once it injects its genetic material, it's then going to disintegrate, uh, disintegrate the host uh, DNA, replicate its own DNA, as well as proteins to make its capsid. Uh, it's then going to replicate and eventually rupture the cell and release uh, other phages that can go and infect other cells. So this is a brief description of the lytics. Uh, replication cycle of a, la of a lambda phage. Uh, the lysogenic um, cycle is slightly different. So you have the bacteriophage which attaches itself and uh, uh, inserts its genetic material into the cell. It instead of um, instead of replicating uh, by itself, as in the lytic phase, it incorporates itself into the host DNA, and that's how uh, it replicates. Now, uh, this the the phage remains in the lysogenic phase if the CI repressor protein is predominant. If the Cro protein becomes predominant the lambda phage will move back into the lytic phase of replication and um, as we described earlier over here. Uh, so as you can see uh, there is a balance between the CI and the Cro protein uh, that determines whether a lambda phage would undergo the lysogenic or the lytic replication cycle. So as I just mentioned, the life cycle of lambda phages is controlled by the CI and CRO proteins. Uh, now the lambda phage will remain in the lysogenic state if the CI protein predominates, but will tr be transformed into the lytic cycle if the CRO proteins dominate. And the transcription of the two proteins is regulated by the C1 protein itself, which is the repressor protein. So we can see over here. Um, this is a lambda genome and uh, the regulation of the expression of CI and CRO proteins is done by uh, the CI repressor protein. Uh, the CI repressor protein exists as dimers and binds to any of the three operators on the lambda genome, either the OR1, OR2, or OR3. Its affinity for OR1 is greater than OR2, and uh, its affinity for OR2 and OR3 are almost similar. Um, but it's usually in the order OR1 greater than OR2 greater than OR3. Um, now once the repressor protein binds to OR1, the likelihood of another uh, repressor protein binding uh, to the adjacent operator increases. 
so thus R1 and R2 are almost always simultaneously occupied by the C1 repressor protein. Uh, however, if both of these operators are uh, are bound by the C1 protein, it does not necessarily mean that uh, this repressor protein would bind to the OR3 domain. Uh, only in very high concentrations of the C1 repressor protein will it bind to uh, the OR3 domain. So there are three scenarios, uh, one in when uh, one in which, uh, as you can see over here, where the C1 repressor protein is absent. And in that case, the, uh, the RNA polymerase will result in uh, the transcription of the CRO gene. And when the CRO gene is transcribed, uh, it will result in the phage moving toward the lytic phase. Now, in the second instance, uh, when there is C1 repressor protein present, it is going to uh, bind itself to the OR1 and OR2 uh, operator domains, uh, and it will prevent the RNA from uh, transcribing the CRO gene. Uh, instead, it will allow for the RNA polymerase to transcribe the C1, uh, C1 gene, which will result in the bacteriophage being in the lysogenic phase. Uh, and at really high concentrations of the C1 repressor protein, uh, the C1 is also, in addition to OR1 and OR2, it is also going to bind to the OR3 domain. And in this instance, uh, both uh, C1 and CRO genes are not transcribed, and both of them are repressed, rather. So when the host DNA is damaged, uh, say under UV radiation, the C1 protein uh, may be cleaved by some proteases, uh, and because these C1 proteins are cleaved, they cannot bind to these operators, and thus the CRO protein can be produced to transform the lambda phage into the lytic phase. So in summary, the C1 uh, repressor protein uh, is a transcription inhibitor that is involved uh, or very important in, the, uh, in determining the life cycle of a lambda phage. Um, and at, as just explained not too long ago, a lower concentration of the C1 protein would result in uh, the CRO gene being transcribed, which will lead the phage to move toward the lytic phase. Um, in the presence of the C1 protein, uh, the, the C1 uh, gene will be transcribed, resulting in the lysogenic phase. And in really high concentration, both uh, genes are repressed.